Are you about to shotgun that balloon? Bro? Relax, relax, I'm about to shotgun that balloon. Right, bro. Yeah, right. What's going on everybody? Welcome to a special episode of Fung Bros Food. Now as you know, there are tons of amazing restaurants out in New York City to cover. And the best way to cover them all is by doing food crawls. And today is a Filipino food crawl through the East Village. In particular, the food crawl today is Filipino fusion food. And you know we could not do it without our Filipino fusion friend, Ryan Benson. Hey, what's up guys? And straight from LA, 5'7 Hooper. Nelson Chan. What's going on, everybody? I may not be Filipino, but I like Filipino food. All right, guys, we're hitting up four spots today. First, going to Ugly Kitchen, then Maharlika. Then we're going to head down to Lower East Side, hit up Kumain, and then Pig and Cow. These four fusion places definitely know their authentic roots. They're coming in with their own New York twist. So our first spot up on our Filipino food crawl is Ugly Kitchen. And Ugly Kitchen is really interesting because they serve a lot of traditional food, but it's a bar in the East Village. Ryan, you are Filipino. I am half Filipino and half Irish. Right. So this is something that like uh, a Filipino grandparent would cook you. Oh, 100%. You have your top silag over here. Uh, so like thinly sliced steak, garlic, rice, eggs. And you got the lechon koale over here, oh. which is your deep fried pork belly. Man. And then we got daing here, which is, it literally translates to dried fish, and then la'ing, which is like dried taro leaves that's been sit out and then it's been simmered. All right, guys, let's do mm. it. Mmm. I do not believe I've had tap salad breakfast. Oh, really? Yo, the sauce is like an extra tangy soy sauce. Yo, this is an incredible breakfast food. Mm. This is bomb. I mean, I could eat this every morning. Every morning. The texture of the steak feels really different from, you know, uh, normal steaks. It's not as uh, chewy. A little more tangy. So let's try this lechon. Now this is not regular lechon, right? No. Because so you know I know lechon from the Filipino barbecues. I'm hacking it off the pig. Normal lechon is roasted. Usually it's gonna be a full, full suckling pig. Lechon koale is pork belly that's been fried. They do it in such a way that it keeps the moisture of the meat. The crispiness is you know unheard of, man. You a big fan of the Chinese roast pork? See your how how does this compare? Well, how is it different? It's different because the whole pork piece is fried. You know, the Chinese style is only the skin, the top part. Kind of like fried chicken, but like, you know, fried pork. Oh, yay. Oh man, what the hand. Do you... <laughs> All right, so before we get into our last dish, the fish dish, let's talk about these cocktails. All three of these cocktails have calamansi juice in them. Except for this one. This one is kind of like a Filipino take on a long and iced tea. This is straight up like that's so refreshing. Juice. Calamansi Sprite. Dude, calamansi. And if you guys don't know, calamansi is a Filipino fruit. Yeah. It's like a oh, little lime. It's a, it's a, Yo, I'm, I'm about to get drunk. So this is daing, which literally translates to dried fish. Okay. And then we have over here laing, which is like uh, taro leaves that traditionally are left out. If you don't leave it out and leave it to dry, it causes this like itchy reaction in your throat. You get this uh, crisp right here. Oh. oh. Is that that uh, ASMR? Yeah. Is that ASMR? My favorite way to eat daing, laing. I take the daing, I dip into the laing. <laughs> daing to the laing. I would say that, you know, for the people who have been introduced to Filipino 101, they still may never have had this because this might be 102. Yeah. That wraps it up at our first spot, Ugly Kitchen on First Ave, but just a few blocks up. We're about to head to Maharlika. Ryan, we walked up the street. Where are we at? All right, guys. We're at Maharlika right now. This place is a little bit more fusion than Ugly Kitchen. They do have their own takes on like different drinks here, bring in like traditional values. So this is the Curtis Lee Smith. Uh, we have the Filipino Flash, the Kalaman Sit, uh, Mule, and the Baguio Breeze. Cheers. Right. Cheers, guys. Cheers, cheers. To Maharlika. All right, we got some food flying in. Uh, here we go. If anybody's ever been to a Filipino party, mm -hmm. this is the first thing that's gone. Everybody knows lumpia. You know, it's their Filipino version of an egg roll. Yeah. Uh, but there are a lot of different styles of lumpia, right? Oh, yeah. As long as you have that wrapper, you can put anything. Right, right. This is their premier fusion dish. Uh, you know, you have a little pancit, the noodles, um, with some uni on top, some breadcrumbs, some shrimp. And this is the fusion that we're talking about. Obviously, uni more typically a Japanese topping, right? Mmm. Yo, that looks, it, I've never seen that flavor. That almost looks so like good. a... It's very unique. 
<laughs> Nelson got both hands on his plate. Please, like he's. Hey, hey. Oh, it's called manners, alright? Please, sir. I want some more. This synagogue definitely looks different than other synagogue I've had. The synagogue traditionally is a tamarind based soup. It was that one thing that I kind of craved when I was a little bit homesick. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was a salad at first. Right? The tamarind really kind of brings like this sour taste to it. Here they did their own take and added like all these different types of seafood plus some miso. So you have like a little bit of Japanese influence. Oh. In there. Sydney shots. Oh, Sydney shots. I like it. It's sour, but it doesn't make you go, ooh, sour. It's just like. This really, so sisi is like a lot of like different fatty cuts of pork and then it's usually served in a sizzling cast iron plate with some eggs so it keeps it like a lot thicker. It's very gooey. Why, why, why don't you tell us how you really feel? That's how I really feel. <laughs> <laughs> it was very gooey. There's a lot of different textures. Yeah. Like you said there's a lot of different types of pork in there. Balu, in my opinion, is like a hard boiled egg with a little bit more extra mm. Um, I'm gonna break it open my head and then sprinkle a little salt, drink the soup, and now now the breaking on the head, that is a traditional way to do it. Not just because you want to be like a bro, like oh um a little bit of both. Okay, alright. <laughs> Are you, you about to shotgun that balloon? He likes, he likes I'm gonna shotgun that balloon. Right, right. This is way more like egg-like. Mm. Yeah, what, what, way more egg-like than embryo-like. Seasig is like chopped up pieces of pork where you can't really see what you're eating. And then the balut is like you see everything that you're eating. So, two different ends of the spectrum. The food at Maharlika blew me away. Yeah. It was so dope to come from Ugly Kitchen, which is more like quick bar food. The good times keep rolling, guys. Cheers to that. Cheers. Cheers. All right, guys, All right. we're heading down to the LES to Pig and Cow next. All right, guys, we're here at Pig and Cow in the Lower East Side. You know, they have a good mixture of traditional food as well as that like fusion between Thai and uh, Filipino food. So and it like, is very like true school hip hop in here. Let's start with the appetizer. So here we got uh, your typical chicharron. You know, this is like your Filipino snack. The chicharron is like a fried uh, crackling, or like a pork stew. So the same chicharron that like Mexican and Spanish people eat, the same things in the Philippines. This definitely has its own little like spice blend in it. I can't really put my finger on what is oh, I think in that's the a five spice. You think that's so? That's like an Asian yeah. Chinese five spice. So guys, here we have the crispy bata, a deep fried pork knuckle. This is my guilty pleasure. If I had one thing I could order in this world before I die, it would be this dish right here. Now this dish by Pig and Cow is a little bit different than what I'm used to. Normally you get a big, big pig knuckle, but they kind of uh, cut it down and like put a, di a little bit of like different spices on it. Uh, a lot of Filipino food like fried and crispy and stuff or is it just the stuff that we got today? Okay, if you're trying to get rich for summer, this is the wrong food to be eating. That's what I'm saying, I feel like I'm on the wrong spot. The man. wrong spot. <laughs> it's fried just the right amount. Is it really easy to over fry stuff? There's different textures. There's the crispy skin, there's this soft tendon that's chewy, and then there's the meat and fat. You know I love the fusion between the Filipino and Thai flavors because you can see the Thai influence in the red chilies here. I don't think a lot of Filipino food puts those Thai chili peppers on no, top. No. And you even have a little bit of a papaya salad here to wash everything down. Ah. Last but not least, here we have a very traditional dessert called Halo Halo. It's, it's gonna be like ube ice cream, so like taro, ice, uh, different, you have different accoutrements that you can put into it, like you jelly. Did you say accoutrements? I did say accoutrements. Talking about Pokemon or what? Yo, what are you saying? Webster Dictionary, get at me. You can put anything in here. You have tapioca, ice, like whatever floats your boat, you put in hollow. I've seen people put cereal in it. To be honest with you guys, I actually kind of like the cereal version where people actually put the cereal in it too. It gives it, it gives it a little more like crunch because it kind of tastes like milk to begin with. If you guys had to put a cereal in it, which cereal would it be? Captain Crunch, no doubt. Captain Crunch, Captain Crunch. Crunch. Man, that's go to. Call me crazy. There it is. Oh. No, you need to call me crazy. There's your crunch. There's your crunch. Uh, not bad. Not bad. Don't think about it like ice cream, pork rinds. Just think about it as something crispy and fried into something cold and creamy. That's all you need to know. Let's finish off our Filipino food crawl at Kumayin. So we're here at our last stop on our Filipino fusion food crawl. 
Uh, we're in the Lower East Side at one of the cornerstone establishments. We are here at Kuma Inn. I would say almost Kuma Inn is a hidden gem. Yeah. This this is really fusion food, or I don't even want to use the word fusion because that has a certain connotation to it. You know what it is? You know what? It's personal. I feel like people gotta start using that word because it's personal to the chef, but it's literally like his life into dishes. I mean, just looking at the dishes, it look hella fancy. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm ready to get in. This is a pan fried steam roll. Uh, in Chinese, we call this the churn bun. This is a really interesting, like, they pan fried to give you that little crisp on the top. That's really different. It's like all in the inside, you get the soft chewiness, but on the outside, you get that crisp, which is really good. I, this is one of my favorite hot sauces I've ever had. This Bronx hot sauce, and the chef here, King, he came up with this hot sauce. All the seeds and everything is grown in the Bronx community garden. That's why it's called Bronx hot sauce. Let's go on the uh, drunken shrimp. You can really taste like the Filipino side, like the like calamansi. For me, yeah. it's something that like as soon as you taste it, you know it. The column out there. Let's get on with the more Filipino dish. Chicken wings. Chicken adobo wings. This is my all-time favorite Filipino dish is chicken adobo, actually. I love chicken adobo. Yo, oh, man. You know Buffalo oh. Wild Wings gotta get this in their, their, their <laughs> restaurants, man. They need this flavor. What I love about this is that it, it has a, just enough tang, but it actually has this strong like butter taste to it. Yeah. Really nice. Well, last but not least, what are we looking at, Ryan? This is a super traditional Filipino dish called toron. So toron is uh, plantains that have been wrapped in uh, a rice paper and then deep fried. Now, sometimes it can come with jackfruit, but it is hard to get jackfruit. I love how the fried crispy skin was so thin. Yeah. 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 That it really allows the plantain to shine. Oh. 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 Ooh. All right, that's it for our fourth spot, Kuma Inn on Ludlow. Do not miss it. All right, you guys, that does it for our epic Filipino fusion food crawl through the East Village and Lower East Side. Yo, what was your guys' favorite thing that we had? Like, one of them. Eating crispy bata at Pig and Cow brought me back, like, straight to childhood. There's just something about that, like, mixture of textures. You can't really beat it. I think I'm gonna have to go with the hollow hollow because I'm more of a dessert person. I love ice cream and I love the different types of, you know, ingredients that's you know, all put in there. You got the sweet, you got the savory, it's just, it's crazy, you know. I really like the adobo at Kuma Inn and uh, that and the tapsalog. Yeah. The tapsalog, which was the very simple breakfast. The synagogue from Maharlika. And I love Toron, the fried wrapped plantain. That was amazing. Thank you everybody for watching that Filipino crawl through the East Village in the comments below. Let us know if there's any other spots in New York we should check out. It's storming in the summer. It Whoa! just started raining. <laughs> All right, everybody, shout out to Ryan, shout out to Nell. Fung Bros back here, David, Andrew. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace. Let's, try, let's try the... Uh, the that was a lumpias. Now, these lumpias are quite short, shorter than the usual ones. These, but, these are the chode lumpias. <laughs> Wait, for real? <laughs> no. He's a for real. <laughs>